a man of faith, a true leader, a father, one who looked after his own. He served the Lord with all of his heart. And we know that, you know, we all have our time, right? We're all going to be with the Lord one day. We all get there in different ways. But for this man, for this pastor, this should not have been the way that he left this world. This is absolutely shocking and tragic news that has hit an Alabama community. We're going to get into all of it here in just a second, but before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. If you guys could do me a big favor, hit the like button for me, share this video around. When you do that, you help get these videos out there more in the algorithm and the recommended section gets more eyes on our content. And I need to request another huge favor from you. Would you consider making a generous donation to support and fund Not By Sight News? In light of my wife's recent health issues, suffering a stroke on top of that, a diagnosis with a clotting disorder that now leaves her on blood thinners for the rest of her life, and even more recently than that, a lupus diagnosis, which has left her in debilitating pain so much that she is no longer able to work. She had a great job, one that she loved, a good salary that we're no longer getting. And with our stacking medical bills and, and other bills piling up from doctors, it's all on me right now. And I will tell you the truth. It is not going to be sustainable for me to be able to continue here to run Not By Sight News with, you know, just relying on ad revenue alone from YT. Because I'll, I'll tell you guys, you know, even if these videos manage to get to like a thousand views or so, you only get like $2 from that. Um, and it's just, again, it's not going to be enough to help keep me going here at Not By Sight. And again, with all these bills piling on us. So we really need you guys now more than ever before. You know, channel viewership is also going way down. So this is all coming at just a horrible time. Would you consider, if the Lord puts it on your heart, if you believe in this ministry and what we're doing, Here's how you can help us. One way is by visiting our GoFundMe. We set up a GoFundMe. The link can be found in the description of this video in all videos. Also, by becoming a monthly contributor by joining our Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. That link in the description of this video as well in all videos. And finally, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. When you do that though, I will tell you YT does take 30% of that for themselves. So if you want to make sure that we get the majority of your generous gift and Patreon or GoFundMe are going to be your best options. And we, again, thank you all so much for your kindness, for your generosity. You are literally keeping us going, keeping the lights on here at Not By Sight. We love you all for it. Let's get into this. Some very sad news taking place in an Alabama community of Dothan. It happened on Friday, October 25th. A man that was well, known by several nicknames, Preacher Man, Mr. Mo, also Yard Man, man by the name of Curtis Moore, a pastor of Seven Stars Holiness Church. He retired back in 2010, but he was still very influential in his community. He was 83 years old. And as I said here at the top, you know, we all know that our time comes at some point. We're all going to be with the Lord one day. But this was not the way that Pastor Moore should have left this world. His stepchildren had five of them. They are in absolute shock right now. They are mourning. They are grieving the loss of this man who served as their father figure for so long. Nothing but glowing things are being said about him by all of these stepkids. And again, he had five of them. They talked about how much he loved them, how much he you know, truly treated them as his own, how much he cared for their mother, who, by the way, they also lost back around the 4th of July, 2024. And now they lose their father figure, the man that was in their lives for so long, they said that the last time that he was spotted was earlier on that day. He was going down the street in his walker. 
But he had a friend of his pick him up in a Dodge SUV. Now, one thing that the pastor enjoyed to do, besides yard work, that was how he got one of his nicknames as Yard Man, he loved to go fishing. And one of his friends on that day had picked him up in his Dodge SUV. They would often go to the state line in Alabama to go fishing. His friend picked him up and Pastor Curtis was sitting in the passenger seat, uh, his friend obviously driving, and then uh, his friend's five-year-old was in the back seat of the car. At some point along the way on Highway 52, the Dodge SUV that the pastor was in collided with another SUV that was uh, occupied by two 16-year-olds. Both of those vehicles had crashed into a tractor trailer. Pastor Curtis was the only one who sadly lost his life in that accident. Everybody else was injured. We don't know the severity of the injuries and even the five-year-old. Uh, we, we'll be praying for their recoveries too. You know, we, we don't know the extent of their injuries at this time, but uh, this is absolutely tragic and this is why uh, all of Pastor Curtis's stepkids are saying this is not the way that you would have expected him to go out. Again, somebody who was such an influential man of faith, a leader, a great father and friend, and so many other things, uh, he should not have gone out this way. Uh, this is extremely sad. And again, um, we have seen this pattern. Uh, I know the Bible talks about it, where a lot of pastors are now being taken for whatever, and it's never easy, okay? It's not like, you know, God is doing it, but, but you know, we ask these questions, why does he allow these things to happen? And, and maybe he's, again, trying to, you know, uh, get these or allow these, these men to come into his presence before, you know, just all craziness breaks out on earth. It doesn't make it any easier for the families and the friends and the congregants of these pastors. So please keep uh, the entire you know, more family in your prayers, uh, everybody at the pastor's former church for God to just bring them peace and comfort at this time. Because again, this is just um, some very sad news. Pray for all of those that were injured in the accident as well, for them to make complete and full recoveries. God can definitely do that. We know that for sure. And I welcome your thoughts. Anybody that has anything you'd like to say, any prayers or nice words you'd like to say towards uh, the more family, the comment section will be open for you to do just that. Don't forget again as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work of this ministry and you would like to make a generous donation to support myself and my wife at this time, remember, you can do that by visiting our GoFundMe, that link in the description of this video. Also by becoming monthly contributors on our Patreon for just as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysitenews. And finally, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video, but I'll remind you again that YT will take 30% of that donation for themselves. So if you do want us to get the majority of your kind and generous gift, then GoFundMe or Patreon will be your best options. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is something that I've been doing on these videos going back to 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. You know, you never know how you're going to leave this world or when, you, or when you're going to leave this world. But when you do, you want to make sure that you're in the arms of Christ when it happens. So for anybody watching now, if you're somebody that has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer that you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then, you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do 
to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Our prayer is going out to the entire Moore family for God to be with you all and bring you peace and comfort at this time. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.